Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. This is the fifth video of my detailed narrowband processing series. If you haven't watched the previous four videos, please use the shortcut on the upper right corner to check them out. Highly recommended. In this video, I will talk about the first part of phase 5, color adjustments. I'll do it in PixInsight. Before we start hands-on, let's look at the color wheel of RGB to get an idea of the goal of color adjustments on SHO palette. We all know H alpha is the most prevailing element in the universe. Oxygen and sulfur signals should be way less. But when H alpha is mapped to green in SHO palette, the funny thing happened. On the final image, we expect to have less pure green color as possible. It looks as if hydrogen is not supposed to be there in the universe alone. It must be accompanied by or maybe trigger some oxygen or sulfur signals. I did some research on this, but I still cannot find out whether this is an aesthetical convention or it has some scientific support. But I'm sure if you get a final image like this, it means you should probably go back and take more exposures on O3 and S2. On the reverse side, if you get lots of magenta, that's bad too. This is more understandable because oxygen and sulfur are not supposed to be there without any hydrogen at all. If that happens, it's probably due to some optical imperfections, like uh, star halos. Without green and magenta, the remaining colors are cyan, yellow, blue, and red. Pure blue and pure red, if there's any, we should just leave them alone. Then, for yellow and cyan, since they both contain green color or H alpha, which is usually too strong in these areas, we should pick these areas out and strengthen their red and blue signals correspondingly to match up with it. So, in one word, the purpose of color adjustment is to recover the SHO image from H alpha's strong green signal washout, and at the same time, let O3 and S2 shine. Okay, now let's start from the file we created in the last video a RGB picture uh, right out from the SHO combination. First thing first, let's make a couple color masks. I'm doing this at the beginning because I realized taking away green and magenta will reduce the area of cyan and yellow color, like these areas in between the pure colors. So if I want my final image to pop out more, I would rather have more cyan and the yellow areas to work with. PixInsight has a great script to create uh, color masks. Go to Script, Utilities, and Color Mask. Just pick the color you want, cyan, and I will use a 4 for the blur, the mask blur. And OK, that's it. Uh, just give it 10-20 seconds, a uh, mask will be created. At first it was very sharp and uh, the blur will kick in and now it looks great. I will minimize it and uh, leave it at the side. I'll do one more. It's very important that you come back, uh, choose the RGB picture again and go to script, utilities, color mask. So I created a cyan, now I need a yellow and I will do blur 4. Yep, that's it. Minimize it and leave it there. Now mask is done, we can officially start the color adjustments. Step number one, get rid of the green. PixInsight has a great tool to remove this greenish hue. It's called SCNR. Originally, this tool was intended to remove greenish hue caused by RGGB uh, Bayard color cameras, but it serves our purpose well. 
It's very friendly. Just one parameter to work with. I usually start with 0.7. This tool is super fast too. Uh, there's no need to create any preview. Just drag and drop. After a couple of seconds, it's done. We can use Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y to toggle back and forth. Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y. Yep. I see some greenish hue there again, so I will increase this one. Uh, let's control Z and I will increase it to 0 0.8 and do it again. Yep, now I think it's good. That's easy, right? Step number two is to remove magenta. If you still remember on the RGB color wheel, green and magenta are on the opposite side. So if I invert, this is very clever. If I invert this picture, I have an invert here. So now if I apply this SCNR again on this inverted image, green on this image is actually magenta. So I will increase this amount to one because I don't want any magenta on my picture. And drag and drop. And now I can invert it back. The magenta is gone. Simple as that. All right, step number three, the cyan. Let me close this one and open the cyan mask. If I look closely in this image, I think there's some abrupt changes too, although I have blurred it out with level four. So I will apply a MLT noise reduction, strong. Uh, I, I created this myself. Uh, these are the parameters. I think it works pretty well. I don't need any masks on it because uh, the purpose is just to blur out this image so that uh, the color adjustments, the curve transformations I will do later will not introduce some colored bright spots. Okay, let me just drag and drop this one. Yeah, I think now it's blurred out pretty well. Like this. Okay, let me apply this one to the color image. And this time I don't need to invert this mask because it's really the uh, bright places I want to uh, make changes to. I will do Ctrl K to uh, hide the mask. Now I should use curve transformation. Okay, here I have some presets. I will reset it and I will activate the real-time preview. For this cyan, I need to boost the blue because cyan is blue and green. Green is strong, so I need to uh, boost the blue a little bit. I will start with the center. I'll move it up. Personally, I like to quantify the changes. So I will say input was originally 0 0.5 and now I output it as 0.65. Enter. Okay, the color looks good. So I will just apply this to the image. Close the preview. I can do Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y to show the before and after. This is before and this is after. Yep, I think it looks nice here. All right, silently is done. Let's deal with yellow here. I think this mask should be uh, smoothed out a bit more. Uh, so I will use the strong noise reduction again. Drag and drop. Yep, I think it's blurred out well. I'll drop this mask to the colored image and come to the curves transformation again. I reset this one. So uh, for the yellow, I need to boost the red. Let's activate the real-time preview. Same thing, I will start at the center of this curve and normally I will do 
0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. Yeah, I think this is good. This turns yellow to some goldish hue. I really like that. I will apply this thing this to the image. Okay, now it looks good. I think we are almost done here. Let me enlarge the interesting parts of this image. Uh, now I'm on 100% and I'm looking for some abrupt color changes in this image. And so far I can tell there's nothing. And yeah, I think everything looks smooth and natural. In the dim parts, the background is quite smooth too. And uh, the transition between colors is also pretty good. Okay, let's wrap up. In this video, I did four color adjustments for my SHO image. Let me go back. I started with removing the greenish hue with SCNR, and then I inverted it and take out green from the inverted image, which is actually magenta. And then I will invert it back. So now green and magenta are both gone. And then I boosted the blue color in what is originally cyan. And then I boosted red in the color of yellow. After these four simple steps, the overwhelming H alpha signal has been reduced O3 and S2 are really popped up. And this looks like I'm closer to a great picture with SHO palette. That's it for today. Hope you like it. By the way, if you don't want to miss out my next videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas and clear skies.